Henry, please keep away from that window. Don't take chances if you think we're in danger. Elsa, she's going to see that man next door again. I don't like it. Oh, I don't worry about her. It's all right, dear brother. Just don't take unnecessary risks. She's gone next door again. I know it. I saw her. Yes, sir. What you'd like to know, that's all. Good afternoon, Mr. Murphy. How are you today? Fine, Miss Carson. Thank you for asking. Go right in. Hello, Mr. Bernard. Hello, Elsa. Sit down, please. Uh, I must have started something when I introduced you to Landis. Why? What do you mean? Did you come over just to have tea with an old man? Or is someone else coming? I don't know. Of course, if Jim drops in. Oh, him now, is it? Well, Landis is a fine chap, all right, but detectives shouldn't get married. Not until they retire. What do you mean? How about that lady who lives next door to us? Oh, Mrs. Tallman? Oh, your aunt and I are just old friends. So I've noticed. Say, if you get any more crazy notions about me, you can meet Landis in your uncle's home instead of my garden. If you knew how I've hated my uncle's house, and now it, it's even worse. I've wanted to talk to you about this, Mr. Bernard. I don't feel that everything is right with my uncle. Financially? Oh, no, it isn't that. It's just little things I notice. Well, tell me some of the things, Elsa. Well, none of them seems anything by itself. Oh, I suppose it's natural enough for two elderly men not to venture out of the house after dark. Anyone might hate to sit in a lighted room unless the blinds were drawn, and anyone might be nervous of burglars or fly into a rage at the mere mention of peddlers. Well, how long have they seemed nervous? I noticed it about two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Have you any idea what makes them so nervous? There are other mysteries in the neighborhood, you know. I've wondered about Deegan. Who's Deegan? He was the last man we had. He shouted all sorts of threats when Uncle Henry discharged him. I don't think he'd do anything really dangerous, though. I like Deegan. Much better, in fact, than our present man. But... Good afternoon, Mr. Bernard. Uh, hello, Elsa. Sit down. I'll pour you some tea. Are you all through? Yep. I have my man in jail and my work here is finished. I'm going to town tonight. Give my regards to all the gang at headquarters. I surely will, sir. But don't think for a moment you're forgotten. The old timers all hold you up as a shining example to me. They call me Sherlock Jr. Well, the old ways have certain merits. Don't disregard them entirely. You're not finished already. What's the hurry? I was going to take you for a little drive. It's the last chance I'll have for a while. Don't mind me. I'll go for a stroll. Sit down. We have nothing to say that can't be said before you. Oh, haven't we? Hello, everybody. Having a little tea party? Mr. Landis, this is Mr. Blake. How are you? Mr. Blake is my uh, paying guest. Calls himself a chemist. And if making horrible stenches is any criterion, he is. <laughs> well, I'll surprise you one of these days and make Dr. Milliken take a back seat. I'll bet he's one. Mr. Blake in? Oh, excuse me. What is it, Chum? Oh, excuse me, please. I want some carbon tetrachloride. Well, what do you know about carbon tetrachloride? Oh, me one time a terror. Oh, yeah? Come on out to my laboratory. Oh, thank you very much. Let's go, before Blake gets back. Oh, he's not as bad as all that. But remember, this is my last day here. All right, run along then. I'll be seeing you again soon, sir. You don't have to tell me that. <laughs> Uh, what a glorious thing youth is. Pity it's wasted on the young. I beg your pardon, sir? Oh, nothing, nothing. Aren't you going to let Mr. Blake have some tea? Oh. What's the matter, Blake? Oh, uh, nothing. Has, has Miss Carson gone? Has your hated rival kidnapped her? Who is he? Oh, a youngster who got on the detective force through political pull, then upset all predictions by making good. I should think she's better than that. She'll inherit all her uncle's money, won't she? Yes, and the old misers are quite wealthy, too. You said you'd see the way was clear for me, and you haven't kept your bargain. Keep a civil tongue in your head, you pup. You better talk to her, or... Or what? You'll find out. Any more of this double-crossing, and I'll wring that scrawny old neck of yours. Who 
Won't you please say yes, dear? I can't now. Oh, it's no use pretending I love my uncles. I don't. They wouldn't let me when my mother and father were killed and I first came to live with them. But they need me, Jim. I saw you, you rake. Under my very nose. Now get into the house, you baggage. Hold on, sir. You must be crazy. I'll show you a load of buckshot how crazy I am. Get out of here. Wait, Elsa! I'm going to marry your niece whether you like it or not. Over my dead body. That may be a prophecy. What's that? Excitement is dangerous to a man of your age. Thank you. Well, I'm glad to see you home again, Mrs. Tolman. Oh, that's very nice of you to say so. For two reasons. Have you seen Elsa's uncles lately? I'm as welcome in that house as a polecat at a garden party. I only moved here to be close to Elsa. Oh, you're not their sister then? Heaven forbid. But Elsa's mother was. They wanted her to marry a scoundrel, but my brother stole her right under their very noses. They've never forgotten it. Yes? Mr. Landis to see Mr. Bernard. Hello. Pardon me. I was next door and saw you come in here. You know Mr. Landis, Mrs. Talman. So you're the young man Elsa wrote about. What's the matter, boy? Elsa's uncle. I'm not going to have her subjected to those insults. What insults? What did he do? A couple of things that I won't stand for and said that I would marry her only over his dead body. That's not a bad idea. What have they got against me? Perhaps they don't like detectives. Just what do you mean by that? Oh, well, nothing, but they won't even speak to me and I'm retired. I've decided not to leave tonight. Henry, there's a man sneaking about the garden. What did you tell me about keeping away from the window? What are you trying to do, make a target of yourself? But whom are you afraid of, Henry? You'll know soon enough if you're not more careful. Terrible has happened. I'll be over as soon as I get rest. Oh, please, Mr. Bernard, tell me what to do. There, there, now, dear, keep cool. Now tell me what's happened. Uncle Henry, in there. Oh, no, no, I can't go in there again. Hello, Doctor. Henry Carson is in there in the library, stabbed in the back. Great Scott. Murdered? Good. Well, this is the one time I didn't expect to see you as if you'd stepped out of a bandbox. Did you think I'd be wearing an old flannel nightshirt? It was a dreadful shock, wasn't it? Come in and stay at the door, Jim. Well, I'm glad you're on this case, young fellow. Thanks. The body's in the library. There's Foot who first found it. Tell Mr. Landis all you know, will you, Foot? Unless you'd rather look in the library first. Anything you suggest, I suppose you'll take charge. Oh, no. I'm on the shelf, but I'll help you if you want me to. Thanks. What do you know about it? I woke about two o'clock, sir. It was very warm, so I got up and opened the window. I saw the light from the library shining on the lawn, so I came downstairs. I thought Mr. Henry was asleep. I shook him very gently, but he wasn't asleep. So 
I called Miss Elsa. Elsa, were you awake when the butler rapped on your door? Yes. I, I mean, no. I don't think so. Did you hear anything unusual before he rapped? No, I... I didn't. I see. And now may I be permitted to suggest that Mrs. Tallman take Miss Carson up to her room? Well, you don't have to. I was going to do it anyway. On your way, young lady. Oh, Uncle Charles, don't come down, please. Why not? What's the matter? We hope to break it to you gently, Charles. But you'll have to know it sooner or later. What is it? Why don't you tell me? It's... it's Uncle Henry. He's dead. Dead? Henry. I knew it. My poor brother. I'll go next. Do you think the stab in the back was the cause of death? Naturally. But this was done with a fine instrument, which accounts for so little superficial bleeding. There was none. The edges of the cut in his shirt and undershirt were bloodstained. Yet if the instrument reached the heart, there would be blood on it when it was withdrawn. If it reached the heart. Young man, I'm short of sleep. Good night. If it reached the heart. Seems annoyed, doesn't he? Well, naturally. First, you tap the wound as the cause of death. Then you talk about it having reached the heart. That's right. So I think I'll be saying good night, too. Now, listen. I don't want to bother you if you're not interested, but I'd be mighty grateful for your advice and assistance. Will you help? Well, if you put it that way, I'll do what I can. Okay. Would you prefer to work independently, or shall we compare notes as we go along? Well, we'll make notes as we go along, and then draw our own conclusions. So, uh, now, if you don't mind, I'll start with this room. All right, young fella, go ahead. I'll follow you. Evidently, the murderer didn't come in by the window. No, there's no sign of a struggle. Carson was stabbed without warning as he sat at his desk, not moved to that position afterward. I'm with you on that. Hey, look here a minute. How do you suppose that blood got there? Did you expect to find it? No, just noticed it. What do you make of it? I don't make anything of it unless someone cut himself accidentally. Carson's wound never bled like that. Look, there's a little mark here, too, in line with these spots, where a sharp point scratched the shellac. That's interesting. Someone dropped a sharp instrument here that had blood on it, and the blood dripped a little. Well, for the present, that explanation ought to serve. But where's the weapon? I haven't seen a sign of any possible weapon, blood-stained or not. What's that on the little table by the sofa? An empty scabbard. It doesn't look as though it would fit the weapon that inflicted the wound. Possibly not. And that's interesting, too. But where's the weapon that belongs to it? Might be worth finding out. Well, we'll look into that tomorrow. Meanwhile, is there anything more you want to do tonight? I don't want to keep you up, but I'd like to sleep on this with as much information as I can get. You know more about the household than you were here first. All right, come over to my house and I'll give you 15 minutes. to know Elsa through her aunt, Mrs. Tallman. Well, that about covers everyone. Well, except Peter Blake, my lodger. What has he to do with it? Oh, probably nothing. But he's had his eye on Elsa for some time, and he knows she'll inherit her uncle's fortune. Well, as far as that goes, I could be suspected myself. Or Mrs. Tallman, you remember what she said. Well, now there's something else. Elsa was very agitated, of course, but wouldn't let me send for the police, which struck me as, well, unusual. She naturally wants to have the murderer punished. Yes, I think so. 
And yet when I suggested that she send for her aunt, she stammered a very poor excuse. But you did send for her. Oh, yes. Now, uh, don't misunderstand me. I don't for a moment suspect either one of these two women. But there's something peculiar at the back of Elsa's attitude. She's fond of her aunt, isn't she? Oh, devoted to her. Well, I guess that's all. Oh, there. Let me show you what I found. Hmm? I found it beneath the dead man's hand. Interesting. What else? A dead mouse. Well, that's interesting, too. It's prima facie evidence against the housemaid, but it's not just the kind of evidence we're looking for, is it? Maybe not. Who knows? Good morning, dear. I wanted a moment with you alone before Bernard arrives. Let's go to the sitting room. I'm afraid I had no washout this morning. I hardly slept all night. I know the shock must have been terrible. Jim, I'm terribly upset. There, there, don't worry. We found a number of clues. Mr. Bernard. Just wait outside. Well, good morning, dear. Good morning. Any inspirations in the night? No, but I've arranged for the autopsy and had a look over the grounds. I was just going to ask about this man, Deegan. Do you think he had anything to do with last night's tragedy? I don't think so. I don't know. Of course not. Elsa, were your uncles still engaged in business? I believe Uncle Henry wasn't away. They seldom went out, but Uncle Henry wrote a good many letters. It was he who handled the details then? I suppose so. But you know nothing of the nature of their business. They never talked much of it. Some real estate investments, I think. You never overheard them mention an enemy? <clears throat> no, I never have. Would it be possible for us to see your Uncle Charles for a moment? Oh, no, you mustn't. Please, don't disturb him now. You know what he meant when he said, I knew it. Only that he's been afraid of something for weeks. Do you know of any quarrels your uncles may have had with anyone? Anyone at all, recently? Who don't mind me? If I'm guilty, I'll convince myself. <clears throat> Did anyone else call at the house yesterday or last night? Well, what was that? Did anyone else call yesterday or last night? I... I don't think so. Won't you let me go now? Before you go, may I ask you one more question? What is it? Well, I just want to know whether you saw anyone other than the regular household about the place last night before the tragedy. No, I did not. Come in, Pud. Sit down. I have a few questions to ask you. This is unlocked, Foot. Did you lock it last night? No, sir. Miss Elsa is in the habit of doing that before she retires. But you locked up the rest of the house. Yes, sir. When I retired, the cook was reading in the kitchen. Mr. Henry was in the library. And Miss Elsa was in her room, I believe. Is there anyone else in the household? The housemaid, Helen Smith. Thanks, that's all. Send the cook in to us. Oh, wait. Did you see or hear anyone last night? Not exactly. What do you mean by that? Nothing, sir. Okay, send the cook in. A little experiment in psychology. Foot knows that we know he's holding something back. You'll have a good alibi. All the better. We'll check it and place him in the case one way or another. Come in. I'm afraid I don't know your name. Uh, Miss Dubbin, sir. Now, Miss Dubbin, I want you to tell me what happened last night. Sit down, please. Well, it was after dinner when the dishes was washed up with the help of Helen Smith who is always neat and helpful with a quiet tongue and tidy ways. 
Not like that Mr. Foote who thinks he owns the house. Skip that. Go ahead. Mr. Foote had some silver to polish in the pantry. So I settled down to read a book called Passions in the Purple. And, sir, while I don't go much for princes or princesses in a rule, I must say those two was as deserving a pair of young lovers as you could ever hope to find. Exactly. And after you read about them for a while, you went to bed. Uh, yes, sir. But it was quite late. And then I had such a fright. What frightened you? It was nearly midnight. And suddenly I looked up from the book page, as if some power outside myself had drawn my eyes to the window. And there was a man's face, right up against the glass. I nearly fell off at the chair, because in the book the prince has been captured. Did you recognize the face? No, sir. I was much too scared. Did you warn Mr. Henry? Me warn Mr. Henry? With his terrible temper? No, sir. But I told Mr. Foote this morning. Quite right. We won't detain you any longer. You may go. Well, that's that. What do you make of it? I think I'd like to have a few more words with our friend Foot. Foot. Mr. Brian, we have a few more questions to ask you. Yes, sir. Have you put down any poison against rats or mice lately? No, sir. I didn't know of any having been put down. Say, by the way, why didn't you tell us about the face at the window last night? Slipped my memories. A few minutes ago, I asked you whether you saw or heard anyone last night. And you answered, not exactly. Well, sir, I told you that I woke up shortly before two o'clock. I woke before that, around midnight, I believe. I was awakened by voices. A voice, anyway. Did you recognize the voice? Did you recall any words? No, sir. But I felt sure I'd been awakened by a voice. Did you get up? No, sir. Why did the murdered man fire Deacon? I'm sure I don't know, sir. What hold did you have on Henry Carson to make him fire a good man without cause just to make a place for you? You'll excuse me, sir, but I don't know what you're talking about. Did you ever hear of Foxy Wilder? No, sir. That's all. Send in Miss Smith. What was all that about? A shot in the dark that hit him. Did you see Foot take it? I certainly did. Who the man? Forger that I haven't seen for 15 years or so. He was arrested twice, but wiggled out of both convictions. We have his fingerprints, though, and I'm practically certain he's the scent. The idea that he might have had a hold on Carson on the past is interesting. Yes, very interesting. Take a seat, Miss Smith. I know nothing about the murder of Henry Carson. I was in bed and asleep by 10 o'clock. Miss Smith, did you sweep the library this morning? I did not. It was swept the day before. Did you dust the little table by the couch? Of course I did. Did you see the dagger there in its scabbard? Of course. To whom does the dagger belong? To... What? We're asking students. To whom does the dagger belong? I haven't any idea. Does it belong to Miss Elsa? Well, if you're trying to accuse that poor, innocent girl... Does it belong to Miss Elsa, eh? I haven't the faintest idea. That's all, Miss Smith. You may go. Well, you found out what you wanted to know. Now, look here. You don't imagine that Elsa... I imagine nothing. There's a lot of things I want to know. Hello, what's up? <laughs> Who? Henry Carson. He was a friend of yours, I believe. Well, I just knew him. Well, sir. What are you uh, doing here, Mr. Blake? Oh, uh, just experimenting. You have a lot of poison gas, I see. Why, yes. Uh, oh, no, not exactly. But say, Mr. Landis, I wouldn't think of killing old Carson. Well, of course not. He'll be ready in a few minutes. Why, I'm going out to lunch. I, I have an engagement. Going far? Oh, no, just around here. Oh, 
Well, you've just missed lunch. What's the bag for? Uncle Charles insisted I come to stay with you. Well, wonders never cease. Well, you're welcome, my dear. Take any room you like upstairs and make yourself at home. Are you acting as convoys? Well, no, we just met outside. Landis wanted to call on you, so I came to take care of him. Well, a lot of help you'd be. Step into the drawing room. John, take Miss Elsa's bag upstairs. We'll just see what they want. Sit down. You want to talk to me? Did I or did I not kill Henry Carson? That'll do for a start. Well, what do you think? You're a detective? You'd be surprised at the number of charming looking women that permit themselves the luxury of murder. You know, I'm beginning to like you. But you haven't answered my question. I'm not going to, young man. Find out for yourself. I'll admit I once shot a man, but it was a very poor shot and I was terribly ashamed of it. Carson's death was no great grief to you, was it? No. I'm a good hater, as anyone who is unkind to Elsa will find out. Have you been in touch with the Carson house lately? Let's see. We talked it over last night. But we couldn't imagine who might have done it. I mean, were you in touch with the Carson house, Mrs. Tallman? Why, I haven't seen Aunt Marion for days. But you talked to her. After we found Uncle Henry, Aunt Marion came over you. Don't be silly, child. She telephoned me last night about 10 o'clock and asked me to come over. Why didn't you tell us that, Elsa? What is telephoning my aunt to do with a murder? It might have a lot to do with it. Did you go? No. I knew that a row with her uncle would just make matters worse for her. Was it because of the incident between your Uncle Henry and me? Yes, he was much worse after you left. Now, you mustn't let our visitors upset either. Oh, certainly not. But on the other hand, Mrs. Tallman, I must ask you not to attempt to leave town. I have no intentions of leaving town. You'll find it very hard to arrest me while Chong is still with me. Good afternoon, gentlemen. I'll inform Mr. Carson that you're here, sir. Hey, foot seems like cocky. Did you notice the change? What's the matter? Never going to speak to me again? Look here, young fellow. What is the idea of that last crack you missed out? Too bad if it turns out to be her. Now you go chase yourself. Well, gentlemen, here I am. Be seated, gentlemen, please. It's very kind of you to give us this interview. We have no definite clue as yet, so we've been forced to come to you for help. I'm afraid there's little help that I can afford you. You see, my brother was a good man. But he had a violent temper, which made him many enemies. Cause for your nervousness of late. Figure sneaking about the grounds. Yeah, and at what time? I, I was reading in, in my room late at night. Uh, when I put out the light and opened the window, the figure in, uh, there by the hedge. Did you describe the man at all? No, it was too dark. Did you hear anything last night? No, I was very tired and I didn't wake up until Foot called me. I'm sorry I can be of so little assistance, but I'm here. You've of yourself lately, haven't you? You said something about being the next to go. Yes. I regretted those words the moment I had spoken them. I had wished to frighten Elsa more than she'd been frightened already by the tragic fate of other. Uh, Mr. Carson, what do you know about Foot, your butler? Why, almost nothing. My brother hired him, I think, because of a letter that he wrote asking for a position. Foot is a friend out of the past. Yes, I suppose so, Mr. Bernard. I felt that sometimes he presumed upon it a little. Uh, Mr. Carson, I have one more question to ask. We found no trace of the weapon yet. Search the house. 
Of course, gentlemen. Search wherever you will. Why well, are looking in there? If it were hidden among her clothes, she'd have found it herself. Curious? Look at it. What about it? Why, look at it. Elsa never wore a dress like that in her life. Well, maybe it belonged to her mother. Take a good look, will you, Landis? This dress has been worn recently. And look, the bottom of the skirt is muddy. And the mud isn't quite dry, see? So you're right. There's another odd thing. Look at that cut. Singed. Quite recent, too. Elsa must have been doing some cooking. Yes, and put her whole arm in the stove. Look at the length of that skirt. And another thing is too big for her. It looks more like a dress Mrs. Tallman might wear. I believe it'd fit her. I'm going to have a look at that stove. Meet you downstairs. Excuse me, sir. <laughs> I thought Foot was here. Do you remember anything more about the voice that awakened you earlier in the evening? I really don't remember anything more than I told you so. Well, do me a favor and try hard to remember now, will you? I'll try so. It's no good, sir. I really can't remember. And I don't want to lie about it. All right, keep on trying. I'll do that with pleasure, sir. No, I can't say that I noticed anything peculiar about the library chandelier. Well, I did. When we were waiting in there for Charles Carson, I happened to look up at it. One of the gas jets was fully open and parallel with the pipe. Well, but Grace Scott, man, we would have smelled it. Oh, no, we wouldn't. The cook tells me that Henry Carson had had a scrap with the gas company and it was shut off all over the house. She uses a coal stove. That's how I found out about it. Well, what harm could it do then if it were open? When I went in to speak to Foot, it was closed again. But who would have touched it? It was put in there long enough to have turned it off. Oh, quiet. What on earth has that got to do with the case? You don't see the connection? No, frankly, I don't. Well, possibly not. It was just a crazy idea I had about Blake. Mm -hmm. I don't take much stock in this affected humility of yours, young fellow. Come on, now, watch the connection. We'll see. Oh, the facts out of the cook that the man at the window looked like a foreigner. Wore a cap, had gray or blue eyes, an unshaven face, and a black mustache. A complete description. Either she was lying in the first place, or she's made it all up. No, she didn't know she knew it. And we'll have no difficulty in finding it. Want me to do it? I'd be glad if you would. And now, before I leave, I think I'll pay Mr. Blake another little visit. Look here, what do you want to know all this for? You prefer not to answer? No, I don't mind. I was only joking. The fact is, I'm working on a new infallible gas disinfectant in rooms where people have had contagious diseases. You have a number of gas containers here. What are they? Why, there's natural gas, there's... And then those carboys? Ether, ammonia, and chloroform. Is this the company that supplies you, Bar Chemical Company? Yes. Anyone come in here? Well, there was Chong, you know. But wait, that fellow Foot from over at Carson's was in here one day. What did he want? Well, I'd promised Elsa a good cleaning fluid for her gloves, and she sent Foot over for it. That was three days ago. 
What time did you go to bed last night? Oh, about 20 minutes after 11, I think. You didn't go out? No, of course not. You're lying, you know. Well, what makes you think so? What time did you go out? Oh, about 10.30, I guess. No harm in going out for a breath of air. Where'd you go? Look here, you haven't any right to come here trying to third degree me. You don't care to answer? No, I don't. Very well. Well, wait a minute. What are you going to do about it? Nothing for the moment. But when you get ready to tell me what you were doing on the night of the murder, let me know. Good morning, good morning. You're an early bird. Why well, haven't you been to bed? You realize this is the third day now and we're just about where we started? Oh, I wouldn't say that. Well, I'm anxious to hear what you found out yesterday. Good. Sit down, then. Oh, by the way, I checked on Deegan. The people who employ him were giving a party that night, and he was on duty until four in the morning. So that eliminates him. Well, I had better luck. I expect to produce the face of the window today. How? Through Briggs, the man Henry Carson was writing to. He's their real estate agent, and none too honest, I fear. I found out through Briggs that the Carsons own a number of tenements that he bought for them under an assumed name. He also admitted that there have been a number of fires in those buildings lately. Obviously, Sapphire Bar. Were the buildings heavily insured? Yes, but that doesn't seem to be the angle. In fact, Henry Carson told Briggs to take steps to stop the fire. Briggs engaged a private detective, but the fires didn't stop. There was an attempt at firing one of the buildings on the very night Carson was murdered. What time? A little before midnight. Well, then the same man couldn't have killed Henry Carson. Yes, he'd have had time, only it wasn't a man. A woman? The private detective described her as being tall, dress of some dark material, small hat and a veil. She moved with a free swinging stride, like a woman who'd been used to an outdoor life. But that's extraordinary. The description fits Mrs. Tallman. I knew you'd say that. I asked Charles Carson if he had any clue to the firebug. He's got someone in the back of his mind, but he wouldn't say. Though he hinted that the firebug and the murderer might be the same person. You think Mrs. Tallman couldn't have done it? That dress in Elsa's room. Well? If she had just escaped arrest and thought somebody was following her, and instead of making for her own home, she made for the Carsons, Henry Carson admitted her and swore at her for disturbing him. His voice, or hers, woke foot. In the heat of the moment, she picked up the dagger, stabbed Carson, then hurried to the hall. Now let's say that by that time, Elsa had come out into the upper hall, and so Mrs. Tallman pulled herself together, went upstairs to the girl, and borrowed another dress to go home in, leaving hers with the cinched cuff. So you figure that you put two and two together, eh? His attitude? Yes, but it wouldn't explain the face at the kitchen window, which is an exact description of one of Carson's and our tenants, a man who lost his wife and child in one of the fires. Let's go see Foot. Good morning, Doctor. Clark? Yes, and I was here very late last night. Carson's in pretty bad shape. Now, what's the matter with those servants? I've rung three times. Oh, good morning, Doctor. Takes you a long time to answer that bell. It isn't my job to open the door. It's Foot's. Will you send Foot to us, please, Miss Smith? Yes, sir. Will you wait in the library? Foot isn't here, sir. What? The fact is, Mr. Carson, Foot has been injured. What? How could he be? He had to be busy leaving the house at this hour of the day. What? Dead. Dead? Foot? Oh, nonsense. Now, don't get excited, Mr. Carson. Foot was killed last night. Murdered? Was he killed here? Mr. Landis, was he killed here? That's right. What does it mean?
Look here, Landis. What do you make of this? Looks as if some very muddy article was dragged across the sill. You see that out there? Yes. The flower bed is covered with footprints that have been carefully trodden out. Did you look at Traces of Your eyes are better than mine, young fellow. He must have dropped his dagger in the mud. Or buried it after the first murder and dug it up again for this one. Another murder, all right. Exactly. He's been dead probably seven or eight hours. He died instantly, or very nearly so. The wounds are very similar, and were probably made with the same instrument with which Henry Carson was stabbed. Yeah, just a minute. Where are you going? Let me go. Keep your hands off me, Jim Brooks. What do you mean, poking your nose into other people's business? Asking me where I'm going and doing. Stop that noise. You want Mr. Carson down here again? Well, I'm not going to stay in this house to be murdered, too. Go back to the kitchen. If you try to leave this house before I give you permission, I'll put you in jail. Helen Smith has gone, and there's only the cook, so I had to come back. Yes, dear, we let her go home. I've questioned both Owen and I can't throw any light on the case. Now, I want you to trust me, Elsa. I... I do trust you, Mr. Bernard. And then I want you to tell me how you knew that your aunt came here at a late hour the night your uncle died. I can't. You'll tell Jim, and he already suspects Aunt Marion. She told me so. Now, my dear, you've asked me to help you, but you won't help me. I want to prove a record is clear, but I can't do it unless I know everything. I suppose I ought to trust you. I know you wouldn't say that, just find out. Oh, no, I wouldn't. All right. I got up to get a drink of water, and I heard the library door close and looked downstairs. Uh, what time is it? A little after one in the morning. Mm, what did you see? It seemed so treacherous. I saw my aunt. Was there a light down? Just a dim nightlight. But I called out, Aunt Marion. Yes, what did she say? She didn't say anything. She put her fingers to her lips. Then she waved me a kiss and hurried out the front door. What sort of clothes was she wearing? Something dark. A dark brown or green dress and a small hat. Uh, could you see her face? Not clearly. There was very little light and her face was in shadow. Well, could it have been the figure of the housemaid? I suppose it might. Oh, no, it couldn't. Aunt Marion waved a kiss to me. Helen would never do that. Mm. Uh, could it have been the cook? No. Oh, Mr. Bernard, do you suppose it wasn't my aunt after all? Well, she didn't speak. And one might have the presence of mind when you called out Aunt Marion to play the part of your aunt. I hope you're right. I couldn't believe Aunt Marion would do anything so horrible. Oh, neither could I. But in the meantime, don't say anything about it to anyone, especially Mrs. Talman. And don't worry. You are a comfort and a darling. I want you to promise me you won't arrest Mrs. Talman for two or three days. I'll call her the hunch if you like. All right, sir, I'll take a chance in your judgment. But what are we doing here? I'm going to have another look at that dress. Gone. Gone. I'll have a chat with Elsa about it. Here's your man, sir. Is this the man you saw at the window? It's the very man, sir. We have a few questions to ask you. Come in here. Sit down. Honest gentleman, oh, I don't know nothing about it. Don't worry about that now. Sit down. We haven't accused you of anything yet, you know. Now, you tell us your story in your own way. Well, it was like this. A month ago, I was a contented man with a wife and, and a baby. He was as pretty a kid as... Well, I'd been working one night, and I was getting home late. I saw a lot of people running towards my street, so 
So I ran too. and kid, they're in fire. Everybody's out. My wife and kid, oh, are they safe? There was a woman and kid, but they took them to the hospital. Hospital? <laughs> Excuse me, gentlemen. I ain't been the same since that night. Well, I rushed over to the hospital, and there was Alice and little Bill lying on the bed together with a sheet pulled over their faces. <laughs> so you set out to find the owner of the building? That's it, sir. All I was asking was the price of a tombstone, like Alice had wanted, that's all. But Briggs, he wouldn't tell me. So a friend of mine in, in the fire department, he made him spell the, the names of the owners and their address. So you came out here? That's right, sir. But I, I couldn't get here till late because I got mixed up finding the place. Must have been about half past eleven by the time I got here. What did you do after you got to the house? Well, uh, I looked in the back window. There was a woman there sitting and reading. Well, she let out a yell, so, so I ducked. You mean you went home? No, sir. I wanted my rights. I came round this window here. But all of a sudden, the lights upstairs went out. So I ducked, uh, scared somebody might look down and see me. That's just what happened. You were seen. Now come clean. So help me, I'm telling the truth. Well, after a while, I crept back and looked under the shade. At this desk here, there was an old man looking over some papers. Did you rap on the window? Uh, not me, sir. I wasn't looking for trouble. I just walked along the house to, to see what kind of a car they had to see if they was rich. The garage was empty, so, so I went home. Is that all? I guess that's all. But I didn't murder the old man. You better tell us everything, Bell. Oh, what's the use? You wouldn't believe it. Why don't you try? Uh -huh. It was like this, sir. The garage was all dark inside, but I carry a torch, and just as I took it out, something, something hissed at me from the back of the garage. Hissed at you? Yes, sir, I'll swear to it. Uh, it scared me so bad that I ducked again. Then how did you know there was no car there? Well, after a while, I came back, and I flashed on the torch, and, and that time I saw it. Well, what was it? I said you wouldn't believe me, but I'll take my oath it was a snake, wiggling away toward the back. Sure, it wasn't a long red herring. I'll take my oath it was a snake. So you went home? Yes, sir. I went straight home as fast as I could. You're never near this place before. Well, I never found out the address till the day before. How could I come? You came again? Uh, I never did, sir. I never came near that place again. You came here last night. Prepped him. Stabbed another man at that desk, just as you stabbed Henry Koss. Oh, I didn't, sir. I didn't. I swear I didn't. Where were you last night after midnight? Uh, I was in the picture show. Anybody with you to prove it? No, sir. I went alone. I'm going to send this fellow home now, but don't lose track of him for a few days. All right, Val. You can go home now. Oh, home? And I'm going to see what I can do about raising the price of that tombstone. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Well, what do you make of it? Well, that was a shot in the dark that didn't strike home. But let's see else about that dress. I'm convinced that that dress was worn by the woman she mistook for her aunt. Do you really think it possible that it was Helen Smith or the cook? I didn't date the Helen Smith. She showed a vicious temper and was quite callous at leaving Elsa alone. And for a good cook, Miss Devon strikes me as being unconvincingly brainless. She told the truth about the man at the window. Yes. And she was the only person in the household that was up late the night that Henry Carson met his death. And so far as we know, she was alone downstairs with Foot last night when he died. <clears throat> the 
Where are you going with this? Uh, uh, to the kitchen, sir. And the incinerator, I suppose. Uh, no, sir. Miss Elsie thought I might be able to wear it. Elsa! Did you give this dress to the cook? Why, yes. I found it at the bottom of Foot's trunk. Foot? Well, Foot must have planted that dress in here. And it would be the logical place for him to hide anything else while Elsa was away. Found it. Yes, Elsa, where you hit it. Oh, I know I shouldn't have done it, but it lay there. Where? It lay on the floor of the library. Foot hadn't seen it, so I sent him for water. Then I ran upstairs and threw it in my wardrobe. That's why you called Mr. Bernard from upstairs, but why did you hide the dagger, Elsa? Oh, don't you understand? I thought I had seen Aunt Marion leaving the library. When I saw that dagger covered with blood... Then you washed it and later hid it in the drawer. You did a very foolish and dangerous thing. Oh, it wasn't as bad as all that, dear. There are other clues, you know. I'm sorry. But I'm not frightened anymore. <coughs> so the gentleman from the chemical company wants to see you, Mr. Landon. Oh, thank you. Will you come, too? Excuse us, dear. Did you see, Blake? No, I didn't. Well, what new theory is this? It's not a theory. I had the chemical company send out Mr. Watson here to examine Blake's laboratory. Well, what'd you find, Mr. Watson? The pressure is good in all the gas tanks except the carbon monoxide. Which means? That most of the gas has been drawn off. Well, could it have leaked out? Our tanks don't leak. Somebody might have left the tap open a little, but if he did, he'd be lying around there somewhere. Well, that's all I wanted to know. Thank you. I'm glad to help you if I can. Well, you've been holding out on me, eh? Not on facts, only theory. Carson's wound didn't bleed. That's why I made such a point of whether it reached the heart or not. My idea was that when Henry Carson was stabbed, he was already dead. The autopsy showed a scarcity of oxygen in the lungs. In that case, the wound wouldn't bleed at all. It didn't. But let's take the evidence in order. First, there's the mouse. The little beggars never die out in the open unless they've been poisoned, but nobody had put down any poison. Now, where's the connection? Suppose that Henry Carson had been sitting quietly at his desk and Mr. Mouse ventured into the middle of the room. Then let's suppose that death suddenly gathered both man and mouse at the same instant. Carbon monoxide. Suppose we see if your lodger is in. Well, it looks like he skipped. I'll broadcast his description. We'll soon pick him up. Uh, say, Landers, uh, how do you figure the gas got in the library? Gas jet in the chandelier. Blake tapped the pipe and let in the carbon monoxide from the tank. That uh, sounds interesting, but I'm inclined to think it's all moonshine and coincidence. Now, how would that hook up with the stabbing of Henry Carson and the stabbing of Foot and the dagger and the disappearing dress and the woman in the hallway? Were they all in the plot together? We're not even sure that Foot and Carson were stabbed with the same dagger. We're sure they weren't. Elsa hid it long before Foot was murdered. Oh, quite so. But that doesn't prove that both men were not stabbed with one and the same dagger. For the love of Mike, man, you don't suspect Elsa. I don't think Henry Carson was stabbed with a dagger at all. It was planted there. On the evidence of Elsa, the dagger was covered with blood, dripped on the floor. And yet the wound did not bleed. Whatever blood was on the weapon came off on the clothes when it was withdrawn. That's right. Well, then we can eliminate at once both Arthur Bell and Peter Blake. Well, neither of them had the intelligence to conceive such well-planned crimes. Well, I'm not eliminating Blake, and I'm not eliminating Mrs. Tallman. All right. But there's an experiment I'd like to try. What is your experiment? Well, it's quite simple. All I ask is that you place yourself at my disposal tonight, and possibly tomorrow night. Okay. The 
you still have a man watching Mrs. Tallman, I want you to call him off. And let me convey to Mrs. Tallman in a roundabout way that you've done so. You agree? I do. Hello, Elsa. Well, I think I have some good news. Landis has agreed to remove the man who's watching Mrs. Tall. And he doesn't suspect her anymore? Oh, may I tell her so? Oh, I don't see why I shouldn't tell her. I don't think there's any secret about it. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if we had the real culprit any time now. Oh, it's a pleasure. Goodbye. All right, I've called off my man. What next? I want you to go back to your hotel and stay there quite openly. And about 11 tonight, slip out and creep up to my back door without letting anyone see you. Anyone at all. Can you do it? I think so. All right, then. Off with you. I'm going to undress. You wait here until I come out again. See, what's the idea? That's the experiment. Don't talk, not a sound. Where are you going? What is all this? Now, this is my show, Landis. Bruce here is the detective working for me. You identify the firebug, Bruce? All but the dresser. Same height, carriage, and walk. Uh-huh. Mr. Landis, I know that I've done wrong. Would you tell me, please, if I'm to be incarcerated tonight or permitted to sleep here? What do you think we're going to charge you with? Well, dressing as a woman, I know it's illegal. But I wanted to find the murderer of my brother. We're saving you the trouble. We're charging you with the murder of your brother and the murder of Foot, setting fire to your tenements and the consequent death of Martha Bell's wife and child. Ridiculous. You know that I was in my room and at what hour I put out my lights. Yes, I found the clockwork arrangement that put out your light. Now I'm going to find the dagger with which you stabbed your victims. That was a smart idea of yours, planting the dagger smeared with your own blood. See, I saw the first morning that you had a piece of tape on one of your fingers. Lies, lies, Mr. Landis. How long is this fast to continue? Until you confess. Come on, Landis. Let's find that dagger. I think I know where to look. One moment, gentlemen, please. I admit I'm the firebug. Unfortunately, I'm the miserable victim of a pathological mania. But I know nothing about the murder of my brother or a foot. That woman next door did it. You murdered them both. 
You fired your buildings for the insurance. Then you came home that night and found your brother as you thought asleep. With him out of the way, you would possess his fortune as well as your own. You saw the letter he was writing to Briggs, and you stabbed him to put an end to him and his interference. You're mad. If Elsa's cry awakened Foot, who came down and found you and Thurman in the tire. He proceeded to blackmail you. You lured him into the library where you stabbed him as you did your brother. Pray tell me, where is the weapon with which you imagine I killed my poor brother and Foot? Well, it isn't in the house, so it must be somewhere in your course between the front door and the side door where you re-entered the house. Come on, Landis. We looked the ground over again. Right. So, uh, you've got your flashlight? Yes. Well, we'll take Carson along. Look there, Landis. Doesn't it seem strange that such a tall plant should be tied to such a short stake? That stake? That wouldn't help it any. Hmm. Bruce, pull it up and let's have a look at it. That accounts for the mud on Foot's back. You win, Bernard. But it took you years to do it. But I got you. You're in the last trap. Okay, Bruce. And you're foiled again, Jack Dawson. I'm sorry, Mr. Dawson. Oh, forget it. I suppose you want to talk to the mastermind. Yes, but I wondered... Oh, I know what you're wondering. I'll just see if she's presentable. She's had quite a shock, you know. Yes, she must have had. You'll find Sherlock in there. Thank you. Good morning. Oh, good morning. Oh, don't get up. See, now that it's all over, do you mind telling me how you happen to suspect Carson? Not at all. You took it for granted that Carson wouldn't murder his own brother, and you never looked his way. I didn't, and did. <laughs> that's all. Well, that's not all, by a long shot. But I believe congratulations are in order. Oh. But don't forget, you must congratulate me, too. For what? Because I've got the man who really killed Carson. Blake? Yes, again. So what is this, a game? Where is the real murderer? I have him by the hand. Are you trying to kid me? I'm not kidding. You killed Henry Carson. I never could figure why Foote should turn back that gas jet in the library. It didn't make sense, but you were there too. It was easy for you to enter the library while I was talking to the cook. Go ahead. Carson's last words when he was caught implied that you had known each other before, but you were certainly not old friends. So you must have been enemies. You on the side of the law, he against it. So far you're right. But not once could I get evidence to justify an arrest. Now what else, young fella? There was Arthur Bell and the hiss of the snake. I took another look at the Carson garage this afternoon. In the back wall, behind the firewood, is a small hole recently bored, leading to your garage. And there were yards of rubber tubing in the back seat of your car. Naturally. It's no dice. You'd already opened the gas jet in the library that day you called about the fence. Mm -hmm. What else? You made sure that Henry Carson was at his desk. Then you connected the tube to the gas jet in the garage. You then went back to your own garage, connected the tube to the tank, and turned on the gas. That was the hiss that scared Bell. You let in enough gas to kill a dozen men and a mouse. Then you drew back the tube. And it was the end of that writing tube that Bell saw. Of course, he thought it was a snake. And the confessed stabbing of Henry by Charles. Henry Carson was as dead as that mouse when his brother stabbed him. An interesting bit of reasoning. How long have you believed it? I suspected it days ago. You were so down on my theory of gas and so unwilling to involve Blake. Landers, you've done some fine reasoning. I never thought you'd figure it out. But you don't know the harm those two men have done. I came here to live with no idea but to trap them. You see, we never actually met, but they knew me as well as I knew them. Hello. Are you two still congratulating each other? We're pretty good. Well, there's someone outside who thinks so, too. Well, you'll pardon me if I carry this investigation a little further. Won't you sit down, Mr. Tolman? Certainly. Well, I suppose you're very busy now with Sean gone and Elsa on your hands, but if you have a minute, I've got something to tell you and something to ask you. An hour, if you like. Well, I thought you'd like to know that Landis has traced the murder of Henry Carson to 
for me. What? But you didn't do it. Oh, of course not, but I've practically confessed it, and Landers has let the matter drop. Well, I'll be... Uh, shh, shh, shh. It's all right, it's all right. What else could I do? You see, I found some rubber tubing that belonged to you hidden behind the firewood in the garage. I parted it over to hide your fingerprints and leave my own, then I hid in the back of my car. But will you tell me, please, in confidence, how you got that tank of carbon monoxide to asphyxiate Henry Carson that night? That's the only thing I don't understand, the only thing that doesn't fit. Do you mean to say that you confessed to such a crime to shield me? Well, what else could I do? But I didn't do it. What? Then who the heck did? Well, you're just in time, children. For what? You accused Mr. Bernard of killing Carson. Now I'm going to tell you who really killed him. Two weeks ago, I was fool enough to remark in Chong's hearing that if somebody would only murder Henry Carson, I'd be the happiest woman in the world. The morning after Henry was killed, I remembered. And knowing Chong's devotion to me, I accused him of it. He blandly admitted that he pried open a window, sneaked into your house, stole the gas from Blake's laboratory, and asphyxiated the old scoundrel. Well, I'll be... Ch -ch 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 -ch. But he'll have to be arrested. Why, uh, certainly. Where is he? On his way to China. Nevertheless, we'll get him. You were wondering where we'd spend our honeymoon. Well, it looks like China to me. You're a man, Paul. Oh, fool. Well, have it your own way. But I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll marry you. Who asked you? Hold your tongue. I'm not asking you, I'm telling you. Thank you.